Welcome to 50 Minute Fundamentals, where we break down crypto projects and learn about the drivers behind the data you see on our charts. Today, I'm joined by Alpin from Osmosis, an automated market maker protocol built for the Cosmos ecosystem. Alpin, welcome to 50 Minute Fundamentals. Great to have you on. Great to be here. It would be great if you could kick things off with just a brief intro to Osmosis for those not yet familiar. So Osmosis is an interchain DEX uh, in the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, this basically means that uh, Osmosis's role is to be a relayer across app chains, uh, to be uh, an exchange layer on top of all of the Cosmos chains and all of the ecosystems that Cosmos connects to. It's currently the largest. Uh, it's currently the largest chain by IBC volume, or IBC is the cross-chain uh, messaging technology of the Cosmos ecosystem. Uh, it is, uh, we do uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of volume a day and uh, have just over 1 billion in, in TVL uh, on our main decks. Great. And as you're built using um, Cosmos SDK, I'd like to ask from your perspective, what are the pros and cons of application specific blockchains? So the main pro is an expanded feature set. This is part of the app chain thesis. Basically, you are unlocking the application out of the application layer. So you have access down the full stack. You can do things like, and we, we are implementing a number of these uh, features in Osmosis, uh, things like paying your transaction fees in any token, uh, where the chain knows that there's a DEX on the chain, so it can automatically swap those tokens that you're paying as fees into the sort of native token and use those. Uh, or uh, in our case, uh, we had just recently launched, and I, I believe we might touch on this, uh, a feature called Superfluid Staking, which lets you uh, stake not just the net network token, the protocol token, uh, to secure the chain, but also equivalents to it. So the, the first version of that that we rolled out was for uh, liquidity providers on a DEX, where if you have an LP token that represents uh, a... Uh, a position in Osmo, you should be able to stake that for its Osmo equivalent. So the, the primary pro is an expanded feature set. Uh, one of the cons is, uh, really, really the, the main con is you lose uh, uh, the ability to do atomic transactions across applications. Uh, you, even though you can do cross-chain transfers using IBC, uh, you can't do them at the same time. So you can't send one to you know transaction from one chain to another and then a different transaction back in one go as you might be able to do on a general purpose generalized compute chain like ethereum awesome that's a great overview of both the advantages and trade-offs so thanks for that now moving over to the token terminal dashboard we can see that you've had pretty solid increase in traction especially since the beginning of this year could you speak a bit about the drivers behind this growth so if you're looking at a multi-chain future where uh, if, if uh, we take for a second the sort of application specific chain future as one uh, potential place that will, uh, will end up, the, the natural place of a constellation, a cosmos of app chains, the natural hub of it is a DEX. When you're hopping from one chain to another as you swap assets during that bridging process, uh, it makes sense that the hub of this kind of an architecture would be a DEX. So, so really, a lot of this adoption has just been in parallel with the growth of uh, chains that have built on the Cosmos SDK, like Terra or Juno or uh, Stargaze and a number of other uh, chains that have, that have been launching over the past year or two. Uh, outside of that, that correlation, I think, I think the onboarding to Osmosis, even though the user experience by DeFi terms is, is pretty good, I think uh, it, it, there's been one major headwind, which is that uh, as a team, Osmosis does, does not want to uh, to give too much power to entities like centralized exchanges uh, and wants to be sort of a, a community-launched, community-led uh, DEX. There's, there was no sort of initial sort of pre, pre-launch uh, VC round. Uh, it was all a community race. So, so in, Osmo, Osmo is not listed on any centralized exchange, uh, not, not because they haven't asked, uh, but because uh, almost out of principle. So, uh, so obviously this, this has you know, led to 
uh, requirement to onboard our own users, uh, onboard uh, volume liquidity providers directly from uh, other chains, and then bring new people off of centralized exchanges where they're holding their atom uh, bef- you know, pre-osmosis launch uh, into the Cosmos ecosystem to start custodying their own assets and engaging with these platforms. Um, so really, it's it's been a journey of uh, of the I, I guess I guess the building of the Cosmos ecosystem and and Osmosis f- falls naturally in the in the middle of that. Yeah, got it. So staying true to decentralization and growing somewhat in parallel with the growth of the broader Cosmos ecosystem it makes sense. Now, on your business model, we can see that you generated almost thirteen million dollars in revenue last month. How is this revenue generated and who does the value accrue to? So this chart is mainly showing our swap fees. So on deck swaps, there's a 0.3% fee. The people who are paying that are the people who are uh, uh, exchanging assets on osmosis. Uh, The current place that it's accruing to is uh, entirely to the liquidity providers. Uh, there, There might be some split uh, down the road on uh, liquidity providers and uh, sort of sending to validators or delegators to validators. Uh, there is no concept of sort of the, the team fund uh, in this case. All protocol revenues go to the protocol, uh, and in this case, we define the protocol as uh, as the community and the key stakeholders. Uh, there is a second type of uh, I, I would call it uh, protocol revenue that isn't pictured here. Uh, because uh, it's it's not been existent until very recently, which is transaction fees. Uh, for the per- first almost year of operation, Osmosis uh, basically subsidized all the transaction fees, mainly because they were so low and there were other ways to, uh, to incentivize validators. Uh, but slowly, uh, we're rolling them back in. Uh, and th- the goal here will be that uh, that as osmosis expands, it's changed sort of uh, set of of uh, applications uh, across uh, outside of just the decks, maybe into a stable swap, uh, and w- we can get into sort of ne- next launches soon as well. But uh, as as the application set uh, expands, uh, there will be more uh, value captured by uh, transaction fees than there will be by swap fees on a single DEX. Exciting. And these transaction fees go to the protocol, so they accrue value to token holders, right? Yes. So they would accrue to stakers uh, and uh, people who delegate to to validators. Yeah. So the 0.3% fee on all swaps goes to liquidity providers, uh, which we can see here is supply side revenue. And then in the near future, we'll also um, be adding transaction fees here, which you will be able to see as protocol revenue. Correct. And one more thing on swap fees, you mentioned there's a possibility for some kind of split down the road to have a portion go to token holders. Is this something that's relevant right now or how are you looking at that? Uh, I mean, we we can implement something like that. Uh, I don't see it as a uh, likelier necessary step, at least in the near future, just because yeah, it would at the end of the day be up to uh, to protocol governance to to decide on something like that. And uh, and Osmosis's community treasury has been growing steadily. Uh, instead of doing uh, you know, I guess taking a cut of swap fees, uh, we have been taking five percent of of all sort of inflation of Osmo, uh, which which will sort of convert or will will drop down every year. We'll go through a, a third inning uh, and we'll eventually cap at one billion Osmo in total supply. But until then, uh, the sort of ice alongside that, the protocol's treasury will be building as well. Uh, so so it won't be directly cutting into uh, liquidity providers' uh, revenue. It, it, they are. Uh, in some sense, first-class citizens in Osmosis. And on the topic of the Osmo token, could you explain what its purpose is? So the Osmo token has uh, a number of uh, purposes. The first is obviously uh, to secure the Osmosis blockchain, which is a proof-of-stake tendermint-based chain. Uh, It's also used to pay transaction fees on it. Uh, This is pretty standard across most uh, Cosmos-based chains. Uh, It also has uh, a... Uh, a very interesting governance-related power, which is the power to direct liquidity. Uh, and uh, it does so by directing incentives. So the Osmo token holders get to vote 
on where incentives go, how these incentives are adjusted on a weekly basis, uh, and uh, and uh, these incentives are uh, tend, at least like for for the current inflationary period are very high. Um, so, so that's one key part. It's protocol governance, and uh, Osmosis also has one of the most active governance uh, proposal uh, systems across any DeFi protocol on any platform. Uh, a number of proposals go live every week uh, and get passed or rejected or vetoed. The community is extremely active in this process, uh, and. Um, yeah, well, that this obviously allows the protocol to do very unique things, like for example, give a loan to a chain so that they can launch their token and bootstrap their liquidity. Uh, this this is the type of actually the quote unquote B two B side of of these platforms that um, that sort of goes uh, undiscussed uh, on uh, generalized chains like Ethereum, uh, where in this case uh, the governance and the protocol is making these decisions. So. Uh, so those are the main purposes of of the osmosis token you already spoke about the drivers behind past growth and looking the other way into the future are there any exciting upcoming developments that could bring even more growth to osmosis right so osmosis launched the first live use case for napchain right something that which was super fluid staking something that you cannot do on a general purpose chain like ethereum uh, because you don't have access to that part of the stack uh, moving forward, I'm our. I think our closest next launch will probably be our stable swap, uh, and um, where, where we'll be launching a cross-chain sort of uh, stable swap native on Osmosis, uh, and then alongside that will come our uh, bridge launch with Ethereum, which is currently being tested on uh, Frontier Osmosis Zone, where you could play around with uh, ETH bridged ETH assets, uh, and then. Uh, also a uh, su support for the Ethereum signing paradigm on Osmosis, which will hopefully let you be able to add, uh, I guess, we'll, which will hopefully make Osmosis the first non-EVM chain that you can add as a MetaMask RPC. Uh, so th th this is, you know, all with the goal of, uh, of bringing Osmosis's user experience closer to what people are used to right now with EVM chains without sacrificing the benefits of uh, you know, Tendermint-based consensus, which is just much faster and much cleaner to use from a UX standpoint than, uh, than uh, most sort of EVM-based systems. Quite a bit of exciting stuff ahead. That's great to hear. Now, in the position of the DEX hub of the Cosmos ecosystem where Osmosis is positioned right now, have you explored the thought of expanding the Osmosis product suite to cover additional DeFi products? Right. So one, I, I think one expansion of the definition of DEX that Osmosis is doing is if you look at what a centralized exchange does, it's not just spot swaps, right? There's much more in the product set uh, suite that a centralized exchange does. The goal, the, the ideal goal is that Osmosis captures most or all of those features natively on its chain. Uh, I think a lot of People might call this, you know, a suite of DeFi products. From our perspective, it's still an exchange. Uh, it's just that the offering of an exchange is broader than just simple swaps. So this is why, you know, we're bringing in stable swap as well. Uh, but on on the uh, medium term roadmap is also, uh, you know, potentially. Uh, some sort of lending platform or some sort of synthetic assets platform uh, that will allow Osmosis to uh, to coexist with these other uh, other types of applications that, uh, quite frankly, need to be on the same chain with each other. It's really hard to to, for example, liquidate uh, loans on uh, on a lending protocol uh, if you don't have a Dex that's next to it, right? Uh, so, so this is um, this is something that Osmo the, the, this type of expansion is something that it, that Osmosis is doing, uh, and uh, you know, a Dex is a really is a natural starting point. Um, but at the end of the day, all of these applications uh, are meant to coexist together, and uh, Osmosis will eventually be offering full functionality of ideally what you might expect from a centralized exchange, even from a UX standpoint. Great, excited to see how these developments play out. It sounds sounds good. 
Um, is there anything else on the future of osmosis or just in general that you'd like to share? No, I mean, I think all of the all of the things that we're working on right now, I, uh, I, I've touched on. But if th thank you so much for uh, for having me. Um, this has been great. Thanks a lot, Alpin. This was really good.